Together with Art Meets, we created this series called Hande Kunotamba, Asam Beni Siotlala, Let's Go Dance Play. Artists were given a text, which they used as a prompt to create a one minute video or sound piece. The text provider took its cue from Titi Dangaremga's novel, Nervous Conditions, and particularly drew from the theme of how family dynamics alter when children are raised outside of Zimbabwe. Diaspora has come to define what it means to be Zimbabwean in our contemporary times. And through this program, we wanted to create a space for artists to reflect on this. Thanks guys for joining us on Zoom. Um, it's really lovely to have you. Um, I think the first thing I'd like is maybe for you both to introduce yourselves, just something short, um, who you are and your artistic practice, and then we can go from there. So I'd like to start with you, Audrey, please. Hi, <laughs> uh, my name is Audrey Lananai Mutau. I'm a sculptor, painter, I'm Zimbabwean. Um, I'm based in South Africa. But I generally just go in between South Africa and Zoom, but because of the lockdown, because of COVID-19, it's been quite hard. Uh, but yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Thanks, Audrey. Um, Victor, can you introduce yourself as well, please? Um, Victor, you're muted. I think he's on mute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, that's much better, thanks. Oh, okay. Um, hello everyone, I'm Victor, Victor Nyakauru. Um, I'm an artist, sculptor, sculptor based. Um, I'm based in Harare, Zimbabwe. I do mixed media sculptures. Um, I've been doing art for quite some time, maybe more than 15 years or so. I'm also a part-time lecturer at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, Visual Art Studios. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. Um, so the first thing I wanted to maybe talk uh, talk with you guys about is maybe talking through how you felt about the prompt, um, your thoughts on on kind of being prompted to make either a sound piece or a video piece that was one minute long um, based on this idea of Hande Kunotamba, Sambensio Jaila. What did you guys think about that, Victor? Uh, well, um, when I think of Hande Kunotamba, of course, everybody of all ages, they, they need to go and play. But my focus was on children. I mean, children, they really do enjoy playing. So yeah, so I focused on children because um, they really enjoy playing as a means of, uh, as a means of communication, as a means of, of, of uh, uh, playing, like, you know, uh, communicating, talking to each other, and uh, yeah, and all those stuff, yeah. And you, Audrey, how did you think, or what did you kind of think about when you got that prompt? I thought it was, um, I love the prompt firstly, but I, I found it to be quite loaded. It was quite a loaded invitation considering it begins with like um, Tambu. Tambu is a woman, you know, she's a, she's a girl. And um, she introduces, like Titi introduces the, the character as having started off in like a kind of Edenistic kind of um, environment with her mother. And um, when the invitation comes out, she's saying, she's basically asking Yasha, like, come and join me in playing as, as, as girls, you know, come and join me in that, in that sense. And it's loaded because they're both women, they're both black, they're both, um, sorry, they're both girls, but they're so separated in how they've been raised and, and cultured. Um, so it was so loaded. <laughs> and it's why I use that prompt. It, it's, it's why I, I use the, the voice note where, <laughs> where I read the, the last chapter because she's basically answering herself because it's, it's, it's like saying that I, I I was so innocent in, in asking Yasha to come and play, you know, it was innocent, but now I know like having experienced all these things that I've experienced, um, that I know that it, it just wasn't that, that black and white, it's being a black woman is complicated. 
Yeah. So I found it quite loaded, but it was loaded in a good way. That's interesting, loaded in a good way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, obviously you tied that in with the video work that you presented. Um, right. And that's one of your sculptural pieces. Yes. So why, why add that element of, it? for me, what it looked like was as though it were breathing, right? Like that sort of movement. Um, yeah, I, I, because when I, I, I felt like she was, she had reached a very, very, um, very tense, anxiety filled moment. And I wanted to make it seem like it's, it's breathing, it's living and breathing. Um, because she, the, the paragraph itself, the way I read it felt like it's, it's such a single moment in realization, you know, and it's not like just realizing that, you know, we were playing, but it's really more like, I cannot believe it's, it's just so poignant and very intense. So I wanted to make it seem like it's, it's anxiety filled. It's, it's very scary. It's, but it's also natural to reach a point where you've grown out of who you used to be, which isn't mm -hmm. easy. I wanted to quickly go between Audrey and, and Victor with this point of this idea of like a loaded moment or kind of the loadedness in asking someone to play. And it made me think of um, your submission, Victor, um, and this idea of the new game. Um, kind of making a sort of new sense of snooker um, and how yeah. Yeah. something like snooker is, a, is a, something we understand as an adult game, but these children are kind of playing it with all of these found objects. Can you explain that to us a bit more? <clears throat> yeah, uh, just like I said before that like um, playing is like all the age groups, they go and play. Like for example, like in this moment, you just say that like, it's adults, they do go and play, but they play with their kind of, um, with their form of play. I mean, uh, they play snooker, but now the kids, they've seen that, well, we can actually uh, uh, copy, you know, this style of play, uh, and then we can come up with our very own snooker and then our very own type of play. So now there is this, um, uh, now there's this uh, copying, or I should say, um, what we're gonna put the, uh, um, I should say, um, being uh, kind of one to to do things which adults do, but still they are still young people. Like for example, you see these um, young people; they do, you know, uh, like what they their old counterparts do. They, you know, try to be like their combi drivers. They try to be like an old Madala, you know, trying to, you know, trying to to prove uh, something which they will on some other day um, uh, come to do in their lifetime. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Victor. Um, hi, Lionel. If you can just start by telling us who you are um, and what you do. Oh, okay, uh, my name is Lionel Mbaiwa. I am from Zimbabwe, 30 years old. I moved from uh, Zimbabwe to South Africa uh, about 10 to 11 years ago. I'm now residing this side. I do painting, drawing, and photography. Okay, so thank you for okay. that. Um... Well, you just everyone who was just talking about their individual pieces. So you gave us a sound piece. Um, maybe could you just tell us about the sound piece and maybe just uh, give a translation of what it means because people might not understand Shane. Okay, so chukutiro tamba waka guta, chukutiro tamba waka guta, uka maiko uninge usa wira. So basically, when 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 people meet. Uh, like family members meet uh, when there's a ceremony, there's a function happening, and then the varoras, uh, the 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 close relatives, they will come and uh, celebrate uh, singing this song and encouraging 
the people around or the person who have done which are, who, have achieved, who have achieved something uh to say we have achieved something and now that we have achieved something uh, we are we are we are sorted we are we are fine but computer it means we are full so basically uh me living ab abroad uh these songs they don't uh make sense anymore the plays which used to play when uh, there's a ceremony or the songs which used to be saying when there's a ceremony they are not there anymore my children are growing in this society in this environment they don't understand these things anymore so i just thought of that song uh and missing the the, the moments those moments when we were living uh back home in zimbabwe yeah no thank you for sharing that um I was saying to Audrey and Victor earlier that an element that I thought was noticeable throughout was this idea of of play and youthfulness and kind of almost a kind of nostalgia for that sort of innocence that comes with that. And it's interesting yeah. to hear you mention how for your children growing up in South Africa, there's these things that are, are somewhat going to be lost. And so it's important to keep that up. And I also noticed like there's something interesting about that repetition of how you kept singing that went over again. So thank you for explaining it. It, it, it actually makes so much more sense in that way. Uh, okay, thank you so much. So I guess maybe a theme that also runs through all of your pieces is this idea of youthfulness or young people. Um, and I'm wondering how, how, I mean, in your respective places, how do you feel about um, the youth sort of losing certain elements or gaining certain elements of, of what it means to be Zimbabwean or, or any ideas around identity? Uh, life is moving very fast. The world is changing. So the more the, more, uh, the youth are getting exposed to technology, and the more the youth they indulge and they uh, uh, indulge into a lot of things. To make matters worse, we are no longer living in the same uh, uh, backgrounds where we've got uh, the Tetes, the Sekurus, where they used to sit them down. We are now doing that part as parents, and they don't have those people who they they envy or they they think they are role models who are our close relatives. Now it's TV. Yeah. So and yeah. So my 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 artwork you can you can you can find as a as a foreigner. I and uh, uh, the way I paint, I still paint the rural uh, background. I, you see my I've got I've got my one or two. You still find my booze. I've got my booze in there, uh, which which is which is my background. I can't leave my I can't I can't. Uh, stop missing my background because it taught me a lot it was easy for me to to maneuver in the city because i i had uh, all the practical things to, to be done in the in the countryside so the countryside taught me everything practical the city was just a theory it was uh, or like a, a playground for me all the practical things were done in the in the in the countryside so even if to, to those who were, who, were, who, were, who were living in the city they would take their children to the rural side uh, during holidays, but right now we can't do that. So the youth, the way they are growing up abroad, it's very challenging for their rights compared mm. to us. From, from school to home, we were like some of us, like personally, uh, a whip was better on me from where I am a good father to be a good person who live in a in a society with other properly. Otherwise, without that, I was going to be someone else. But to date, this youth of today. There were a lot of voice. There were a lot of things to say. They they need to know why. Yeah, yeah. No, I I hear you. I was wondering, Audrey, if you also have any response to that or any thoughts around that. Um, sorry, could you repeat the question, please? Because I got so um, stuck. No, I, I, the question was just around how there's an element of youth youthfulness in all of your videos. Or you all seem to engage with that topic, so I was just wondering how um, uh, how you think about the youth, um, and just in terms of the youth who has stayed in Zim and youth who has left Zim. Um, 
Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I feel like we're, we're all just trying, well, people my age and we're just trying to find a way to, to, um, to establish a space in a world where they, there really isn't that much space for people my age, you know. Um, I don't know that many people that can afford their own housing. <laughs> And I don't know the, that many people that can um, that can actually say that they've established an entire career. They, they're not still in that developing stage where they still need to be working for someone. And isn't that something that we should be striving for is to just have our own businesses and growing each other and we're just not there yet. More so for people in, in Africa. Um, but as for engaging with, with um, the being youthful and being young, I guess it would depend on what gender you are, not to go there, but really I feel like um, the male child has more time to grow up to at, at like a more steadier pace than the, the girl child. So yeah. you reach a point where, um, they just, I mean, in Zimbabwe, there are more uh, girls who have to worry about 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 marriage, and they are like boys who have to worry about marriage. So you, there are just some standards that we have to uphold their, ourselves to, that men don't have to uphold themselves to, and um, you tend to lose the the youthfulness, the youth the youth stage. Mm -hmm. um yeah so i'm i guess it depends yeah on how you're born <laughs> yeah no that's absolutely true um like there's a there's still a, such a difference within within gender dynamics and zim um and i guess another thing i was also wondering about maybe with all three of your videos was maybe more with victor's video how there was this element of improvisation especially with the way that the kids created their own snooker um their own snooker table um so maybe if you can speak a little bit more on like that element of improvisation victor um as you can see when the video starts right the children are already playing i mean they are you know i just i, I just caught them and and you know and Unwanted. I mean, they they were just playing, and then I just came in and then um, take the video. So yeah, as they were going through the video, um, as you can see, they were um, kind of uh, exchanging, like like you know, like like we do. Like uh, if you hit the ball, you have to get. Uh, I mean, to give the uh, uh, the the other one a stick. And then he hits the ball again. But um, as you can also, the sticks are different. You know, there's a stick with a red, um, um, with a red, um, um, a red pane at the end. And then there's this other stick with a blue, um, with a blue color. Yeah. And also, as you can see, there's a, a young girl there holding a stick as well, trying to play. Can you can you see the young little girl mm -hmm. trying yeah, to yeah, play? In the video, yeah. yeah, you know she wants to be part and parcel of of you know of the um, of the game, and also the fact that the game well snooker isn't isn't all that new, but the fact that um, the young guys have found a way of um, of getting around how to make a snooker and how to you know uh, to make their very own snooker. So that's why they, I mean, you know, it, it, you know it, it caught me, you know, the other day, like, how did they come up to make their very own snooker? And how uh, do they put out the rules? And also, you know, the knockout stages, how is someone being knocked? Is it because of uh, the balls, number of balls sank? And also, I was very interested in the young lady, you know, she was also, uh, you know, wanting to play the snooker. So yeah, to mm -hmm. me, it was 
you know, a whole new thing to me. But snooker is not yeah. all that new. But the fact that these little ones came with this new idea of making it and bring it new. to them is new, but it isn't all that new. Also, can I add on that? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, all the players, including the lady, the young lady, are my children. At the front, I mean, at the front of my house, at the veranda. So they were busy enjoying themselves and then just come through and say, I didn't say anything to them. So they just continued with their game. Yeah, no, that makes so much, that, that's, that's a, that makes so much sense. Um, yeah, and what you were talking about definitely echoes what um, Audrey was talking about as well. Um, I also just had another question which had to do with the form of the video. Like, I know we all requested you all to make a one minute video um, and I'm wondering how you guys, like if you found that approach to be interesting or useful um or yeah or if you if you if you would redo these videos but maybe do them for a much longer time period um did you find that the one minute format was very was enough time for you to get across what you wanted to get across in each of your pieces as for me the one minute was the master class i mean you know uh because these things wasn't really prepared i mean if you tend to prepare something I mean, it goes, you know, out of control, but if you just take something, un, you know, un, unprepared, I mean, to me, it's, it's, you know, it's just, the, you know, the first cut, I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I think if I have to produce another one, I mean, it will be difficult for me because I'll be controlling. Okay. I think I agree with with with, uh, with Victor. It's uh, uh, there will be a lot of editing, and I mean, uh, which will be not necessary if you can capture what you can capture at that moment. That would be very artistic and very interesting. Yeah. that's my opinion. Yeah, sure, yeah. Lionel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to to add to add about about uh, about about the, the the that that play. I mean, you know, you know how how interesting is it in uh you like small children how they play they there's of course we've got this uh, uh mentality that there are games which are played by men and play, game played by women but as far as i'm concerned when we used to play raka raka i used to play raka raka with my sister i used to play wish mm -hmm. with my sister so when we were kids yeah. we used to go swim together with my with my sisters of course you find one or two uh uh chores uh, more than games, which we say, go fetch fire. Would go take care. Of their dog go in the pastures and take care of the uh, of the uh, kettle. But uh, basically, when you kids, when you're young, when you play, you play together. I can even see here my kids uh, with a boy and a girl. They always do things together. And then we grow up, and then we start separating. Uh, uh, maybe due to we are now shy or we get to another world where we think this is for ladies ladies they, they need to uh, uh sit like that uh, and they need to play with with but when we're kids we always play together mm. in zimbabwe yeah <laughs> yeah 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 of course yes um yeah um and uh oh audrey did you want to say something Um, only I, I guess I, I, I was wondering if perhaps that's just one story because you're just one person saying that it, it was seemingly equal um, when you guys used to play. But they, I'm, I'm sure there, there are more people who haven't had the same stories that you have had. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're the three, literally three authors. I'm sorry, please forgive me for forgetting the third one, but the book is called um, The Joys of Motherhood. And then there's the other one by um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie called Purple Biscuits. And then there's this one. And they seemingly, they seem to have the same, um, the same narrative, which is that women and, and girls just, they don't have the same amount of time to play as, as boys do. This very, this very story that we're discussing, 
is about a girl who only got her opportunity to to get this education because her brother passed away tragically and before that she still had to fight to actually gain that education so i don't know i'm sorry yeah i'm not sure um i might not really know uh which era which era was that but uh is as far as i'm concerned from my father's era who were who, who was born in 1934 in a family of seven they were all educated uh so this thing of girl child who who who, who doesn't get edu- who doesn't get education it's it's one uh, or it's not common in in a in a zimbabwean society because you find as as back as 1934 women were already going to school we we having the same the same uh, education uh, uh, compared to men and then you find in certain areas and in certain families where you find individuals who are not interested or who got that mentality of saying girls they don't have to go to school uh, I, i had aunties who were, who were teachers my sister my sister who my, all my sisters were quite well spoken very educated than, than me so uh, in compared to my neighborhood which i grew up in. of course you find you find uh, uh, girls maybe uh, saying you don't move at night uh, was with some place which you used to do at night as well, like uh, chibanduru and fonda a uh, uh, small boys uh, girls were not encouraged to go there because uh, uh, it's dark but during daytime you find that all the games which you play girls are included in and education was compulsory in my in my neighborhood which which I grew up in if you don't show up at, at school the teachers would would go on a bicycle uh, or would write a letter to give to the next child can you go give to the parents and confirm why is it the child is not is not coming to school yeah um i think maybe what the i i, I see i hear what you're saying lino um but i think maybe 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 what audrey's uh, trying to point to is that while whilst there was a there's huge uh, disparities discrepancies between women and men and how they are treated in societies while it used to happen in a much more pervasive era especially in this area era that the book was set in in the 60s um so i think maybe what audrey's talking about is that there's still sort of these differences in how men and women get treated in Zimbabwean society so it's not necessarily like a all encompassing um idea that all women are now equal um when the truth is not all women are who there are still women in Zimbabwe who are even not equal today the numbers might be different as compared to like the 60s where the book was set in um but it's still occurring today um so just to kind of also bring up another point of of the another point in the, in the conversation um i was also wondering like in your own practices um how do you approach the idea of play in your own practices uh play play in in most cases was not just play 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 was uh meant to to edutain to edutain people mm-hmm. so <laughs> i like that <laughs> you, you might think you, you, you might just think that we are just playing but it, it's it's a lesson I, i got there victor victor was speaking saying uh kids will be imitating uh uh the conductor and then we we and and then and then we used to play baba baba and my mother and child when we when we were young so that was to prepare and responsibilities which are which are given to the mother responsibilities which are given to the father so it it was uh the, those plays were meant were meant to to equip us in our in our future yeah mm. true true yeah how do you approach play in your work audrey um i feel like i'm better equipped to 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 uh approach to use play in my work because i 
have lived both the part of like gaining a lot of responsibility at a young age and also being a child. So when I when I want to um, approach a subject where it's in, it, it's intense and it's it's quite hard to, especially when we're considering emotions, because um, my work is about emotions, about like opening that that wound of um, of um, of who we are and and seeing those ugly parts of us and seeing how we can heal ourselves and because I. I'm basically like a mother to myself and I'm also the child. I'm able to approach certain things where I felt wronged or um, where I felt wronged or something right has happened in my life and I'm able to approach it in, in a mature and, and yet um, celebratory and, and youthful manner. So it's, I think, and I'm sorry <laughs> to keep coming to this point, but I think women are more equipped to, to use play in, in art because they're both the child and they're both the adult. They can approach anything in a way where they know where to stop and where to, to continue and, you know, and, be <laughs> and be as lively as they want to be. And that's that's how I've approached my work. Yeah, no, it's it's really good to hear. Um, don't be sorry. I think it's fine to affirm your point of view. Um, but also, Victor, I was wondering how you also approach play in your work. Uh, well, um, it may look like repetition, but uh, still to add up on Lionel and like what I've seen before is like um, playing is another way of educating, it's another way of entertainment, it's another way on the other hand of equipping you with, you know, with the knowledge and the know-how of how we as young people, we are going to do about, I mean, how are we going to do about it? I mean, it might be a way of life, it might be how, uh, like for example, um, you can find, you know, uh, a, a classroom, you know, within the, you know, within the kids and there's a teacher there like, you know, you know, a teaching, you know, the blackboard. So, you know, it's like, you know, it's another way of, of, of uh, uh, encouragement, you know, that child, I mean, if you look at that child, maybe true or false, maybe she will be a teacher one day. And then that's another way of encouragement, you know, coming up through children play. Uh, play does a lot of uh, things, I mean, in, in, um, in educating, uh, ourselves because play doesn't only uh, end uh, uh, with children it also goes through with you know with the different age groups yes um, I just want to build on what Victor has said and that it is sort of like a form of education except um, you're sort of meeting yourself and you're educating yourself on, on who you are from from within and how you respond to the external environment. And um, I feel like if people were to use art in that way, we would have so many people who could reconcile their emotions with themselves first before they, they meet um, everyone else and we'd be able to actually empathize and sympathize with, with people. That's why art is so important. Um, but yes, that's, I think, <laughs> the best oh and I also use it because um it's it's what I mean when I when I say that emotion and art go together so well because you you're having to open yourself up and be vulnerable and be vulnerable and and teach yourself um where to stop and where to end and and begin all that and and be honest with who you are and and why you're doing a certain thing and art introduces that to you which is why it's it's so important. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I guess this is a question more for Audrey, because you mentioned earlier that you go between Zim and SA. That coming back and forth um, in relation to everything you just said now, but like art and its value, um, do you see a difference in, 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 in your practice perhaps or in the reception of you as an artist between Zimbabwe and between South Africa? 
I honestly can't say. <laughs> I can't compare like the reactions between the countries. Right. Because I haven't okay. been able to show. Yeah. Yeah. We were just thinking, I was just thinking about this idea of, of, you know, being in the diaspora and, and how, you know, home can impact work or not impact work at all. So mm. um, I think that's just an interesting thing to touch on when you especially think back to nervous conditions and this idea of coming home. Um, mm. And I think for a lot of artists who are Zimbabwean, but based outside of Zim, um, you know, this idea of how are you either putting that into your work or how does that influence the way that you work? So I just wanted to maybe touch on that. I think, um, Victor, sorry, if I may just ask and go like, um, have you shown in, in Zim and South Africa? Show my work? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, not in South Africa, but in Zim. Zim and, and out of Zim, like um, US, China, Korea, Hong Kong, yes, but not in South Africa. So maybe I can I can close the, the discussion here. Um, so thank you both for for having this discussion with us and also for participating in the program Hande Kuno Tamba. Um, I think you all gave really wonderful videos and had really nice responses to the prompt. Um, also very different responses varying in different. I mean you each approached it in a different way, which I think we all appreciated. So just from our side, thank you for participating and thank you for coming to this discussion today. You are very welcome. Thank you for having me, really. Yes, thanks guys. It was amazing, thank you. Mm -hmm.